Hello there, it's Adrian here from Sophiest. I'm just popping by with a bonus episode of the podcast because I'm looking to answer the questions that a lot of our listeners have about how easy it is to visit China at the moment. Maybe you've got a factory there, a supplier, maybe you're coming to source suppliers. We've mentioned before, and you've no doubt seen in the press, that it's possible to visit China. And that's true. It's absolutely possible for people that are working there or business people to come and visit in many cases. But how easy, how straightforward is it? What is the quarantine like? What are the hotels like? What happens if you test positive? Do the men in white suits come and take you away? Well, have I got a treat for you in this episode? Because one of our team's recently done that. She travelled back from Europe and unfortunately wound up in a quarantine hospital. So what's that like? And what sort of tips does she have for people who are planning on travelling to China sometime soon? Well, just keep listening to find out. I've got a special guest with me today, live from Quarantine Hotel in Shenyang, China. It's Kate, who is our head of supply chain management. Now, Kate is Ukrainian. She's been back to Poland recently to visit her parents. And I'm sure it was really lovely to actually go and see your parents, Kate. Yep, it was. However, short enough. <laughs> yeah, and Kate is normally based at our head office in China, in Shenzhen. However, she was able to leave China and go to Europe. I guess that part of the story was simple enough. The fun and game started when you were heading back to China, right? So really, I think a lot of our listeners are quite interested in visiting China. And although it is possible these days for people who are working in China to, to get in and come out, or people even visiting for business now, it's certainly not a simple process. Nothing like Hong Kong is these days where there isn't any quarantine and things like that. And I think you're a real example of what happens when things don't go entirely to plan. So, Kate, would you like to uh, explain to everybody, you know, your what happened on your way back from Poland and all of the sort of the procedures that you've had to go through so everyone has a better idea of how it is to go back to China? Definitely. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be with you today and uh, share my experience. And I hope it will be helpful in mm -hmm. case uh, someone plans to visit China in, in the near future. So I'd like to explain how it really looks like if you're planning your trip to China. Uh, so first, uh, uh, officially, to be able to come to China, of course, you need to have a valid visa. Uh, on top of that, you need to have uh, two PCR tests, 48 hours and 24 hours in, in your hands issued by two different labs. And those labs need to be approved by Chinese embassy in the country you're applying to. Mm. And on the day of your flight, you need to submit your itinerary, your passport, all the documents and also both of these PCR tests. And then you're get you're, uh, you're approved by Chinese embassy and they send you a green code and this green code means that you can actually board the plane so on on when i was planning to go back to china i i did a lot of tests myself and those were negative also i did pcr tests before the flight in in a designated labs by chinese embassies and all of those were negative as well so i was pretty sure that um, i would be safe to go but uh, so yeah so it was pretty smooth to land on the plane to complete all those formalities and everything and uh, on the plane beware that if you're taking a direct flight to China then uh, you will not be fed uh, on the plane so there is no food it's just like wow. they give you a small yeah small package and uh, everyone is wearing those uh, sterile costumes so basically there is no service in in the plane at all uh, so if it's a long flight prepare yourself so once you land in china uh, there is a like uh, quite some procedure at the airport so there are like maybe i don't know up to 10 stations in the airport where you go like one by one so you check in there you check in there like everywhere they check your passport i don't know they check something else uh, so that's like you're running from one table to another table everything is organized so it's, it's going pretty fast uh, at one point they're taking a pcr test on arrival 
uh, at the airport uh, for everyone. And then once you completed all the formalities, so you are out uh, uh, of the airport uh, where uh, hotel management, quarantine hotel management is picking you up, putting you on the hotel bus and you are going to your designated quarantine hotel. You cannot choose hotel you don't know which hotel you will be taken to uh, it also differs a bit in pricing so it's about um, 300 rmb to 500 rmb per night depending on on the hotel you will be staying at yeah so about i don't know 40 euro to 80 euro or something like that, um, depending on, on where you will be taken to. So that happened to me as well. I came to the hotel, uh, I checked in and the hotel was okay. And everything was perfect on my day one until maybe 8 p.m. So I got a call that uh, I've been tested positive on, uh, on arrival. And uh, so I was asked to pack my bags and that I will be taken to hospital in uh, yeah in one hour wow. um another um, another thing here is that uh, in china no matter you are symptomatic you have nothing you have no fever or whatever uh, you will be taken to hospital anyway so there is no way you you, you are staying in the hotel and just and wait until you're negative no mm. so i've been given a costume you know it's like i don't know how it's called like it's space <laughs> space costume isolation costume and uh, face shield and mask and gloves and everything mm. I, i had to wear and uh, then Then uh, I was taken by uh, ambulance uh, and it was four of us from uh, my flight. Uh, so we were taken by ambulance to the hospital and uh, this is Shenyan People's Hospital. Uh, so once you are taken there, so all I was taken into a um, single ward. But it was uh, like, it, it's a prison, more or less, in, in my opinion. Yeah. So it, it was very far from, um, from hospital, any hospital standard, because no matter what, it, it's been super dirty, like the toilets had a lot of hair, like no one cleaned in, in, in that room for, for I don't know how long. Also very, very, very bad conditions, like there is no, there are no windows, uh, there is no light, like everything is very dirty and very old, and, and, and that's it. so you're basically locked in a kind of prison cell. Mm -hmm. uh, on my side, uh, so as, since I knew that I had COVID before, so I kind of knew that I cannot really be positive, or even like I could be positive once, but that could be like false test or Or, or whatever so i was asking to make another test to confirm that yeah. um, but that didn't happen so then on day one a person came to take another test and that one was negative and uh, i was asking like trying to call to hotlines and asking to take me back to the hotel since the second test came out negative but that doesn't work so according mm -hmm. to regulations if you've been tested positive at the airport no matter your later on tests uh, you need to stay in the hospital for seven days wow uh yeah so no matter what how did you feel i mean you must have been quite scared really being sort of pulled out of the hotel and then being bussed to the hospital did people give you a lot of information No, so no one, I was very scared, of course, and uh, and people don't really talk to you, no matter I speak Chinese or not, they just mm. don't talk. So even how I knew that I've been taken to this hotel, so I had a call from someone, and uh, she just called, and then she realized I'm a foreigner, and then she said, oh, I'll call you back, and then she hung up, and then maybe in 30 minutes, a guy came with this um, isolation uniform and i was like okay so what's that Just like do i need to wear it in seven days or something he was like no you've been tested positive for covid how you don't know so we'll take you to hospital it's like hmm <laughs> i see <laughs> so when we arrived to the hospital also no one talked about anything they're just taking you to the hospital ward uh, i was trying to of course to to ask how long i need to stay can i do another test if it's negative maybe i can go back to the hotel but no no one really talks to you how i knew that you need to stay seven days it was only after i asked my embassy and my embassy called to hospital um like person in charge of covid department and this is only when we could find out that uh, no matter what i need to stay seven days according to their local regulations
Until that time, no one gave me any information how long I need to stay in that hospital, what are the conditions, whatever. Uh, mm. Same happened as uh, when I asked to actually clean this room, at least. No, they just gave me some, I don't know, antiseptic liquid, basically, and glass. So mm. if you want to clean, you just do it yourself. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's another experience. Mm. And uh, yeah, and you need to pay uh, like 5,000 RMB. So Adrian, maybe you can help me how much is that? That's about like 800 euro, I think, more or less, uh, for a uh, for a deposit first? Uh, yeah, 700 euros about, something like that. 700, 700 euros? Yeah, $700, dollars, about the same. Yeah, so this is the deposit you pay first. And uh, then your um, treatment will be deducted from there. And uh, so in my case, uh, there was no treatment, obviously. So it was just they were deducting for this um, amazing room nice. and uh, maybe for some testing and they did some they did a ct for me they took some blood test uh, but again i've got no results of those like no one gave me anything any papers what are the results what they tested what they needed like i have no idea of that until mm. now actually so this is yeah five thousand and then they're deducting and depending if because I know uh, there was another guy from China who's originally from Ukraine and we exchanged three chats and he was receiving some treatment and it uh, then he had to pay five thousand and then three thousand which is like over over wow. one thousand euro now yeah so yeah, for yeah. extra for, for treatment and all of this it just doesn't include food. So food you need to order yourself. They give you kind of nurse in charge who you can be chat and she will give you food, but don't expect there is like any choice. Mm. No, it's just basically uh, will you order food or not? And the food, yeah, the food quality is also far from perfect. And also you can order some like little supplies because like there is no toilet paper, there are no towels, like nothing, no necessities at all. So those you can also order at your cost. So this is not mm. good. And so I, I stayed there seven days. Uh, had uh, all, all the tests have been negative, and normally there on day seven there was a control test, and after that I was supposed to be transferred to the hotel. But on day seven my test was positive again. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So I've been very lucky here. Uh, so after that, uh, since you've already. St- paid seven days uh, you need to like you need to wait and two consecutive days that your tests are negative and then you can be transferred to the hotel yeah uh so they will be waiting so you don't need to stay seven days more luckily but you need to have like two days in a row negative tests and you can be transferred so in my case it was day nine so basically two next days i had negative tests um i guess i've heard a lot of stories that people who had covid they can get they can uh, give positive tests randomly even like after one month after two months here and there so i think this mm. is what is happening to me somehow uh, not not in the right time <laughs> I would say, but yes. So on the day nine, I was transferred to quarantine hotel. Um, it was it's already another hotel. It was not so nice as the first one, uh, and it's uh, I think it's like a high risk, uh, super high risk <laughs> management hotel, something like that, because it had like three layers of fence in front of it. Right. Uh, like yeah, like super like everything is um in um plastic bag, like in the floor, like mm. the walls, and it's like a lot of huge amounts of uh, disinfectors here and there. So it's like a super high risk close management hotel, but at least it is clean. Uh and that's already like a big <laughs> level up. And uh, so I've been transferred here and uh, here I need to stay Say seven more days and they test you on day one day three day six and day seven and if you are good then you will be allowed to fly or wherever to go to your final destination uh, so let me i will talk more about uh, moving to final destination and what you are uh, what what awaits you there so once you've done your seven days in the hotel quarantine, it's not actually over, right? Not at all. So there's still not, more yeah, hoops yeah, yeah. to jump through. Yeah. 
already uh, I'm, I'm on day five. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're just staying here. Like they give you food two, three times per day. Uh, and you're just staying. That's it. Nothing. nothing. <laughs> no more entertainment here. So if uh, day six and day seven are like the decision makers, I think they're testing on day six and day seven. They're testing. Um, they're doing swab tests. They're doing nose tests. They're also testing your phone. They're testing your pillow. Mm. They're testing your luggage. So like <laughs> you've been tested. Everything is tested, and wow. uh, yeah, and only then they decide if you can go. I'm a bit worried here because they're checking. Is not only the tricky thing I think, which also caught me, is that they're testing not only negative or positive. So it's not like in in Europe you would do like antigen test, and if you're negative, you're negative. No. Here they're testing like CT level, like you can read more about that, but this is basically virus load that you have. And uh, it's like for people who had COVID before in the like, next few months, it is pretty low. It's mm. lower than, than, than Chinese standard. So even if you're negative, but your CT level is quite low still, then under 40, I think, then they will not let you go, no matter that you're obviously negative after all those all, all this time. So this is the tricky part. And I know people who have been stuck like this for, for months until wow. their CT level go, goes back. So this is why I'm very scared of how mm. it will be. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so this is basically they're waiting, waiting until your body is uh, fully recovered from the virus, which even like you, you're you cannot give it to someone else by now, but still maybe some leftover there. I don't know. Uh, so you 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 start to know a lot of, about viruses after you come to China and experience. <laughs> I can't imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't know about that myself. Uh, yeah. Isn't it isn't it normal after you have a virus? I mean, whether you want to argue about how serious having covid is these days or not that's a completely different story but like isn't it normal that your body will still show some signs of it because that's that's how immunity works right yes yes of course you're taking some time to recover and for example in hong kong if they track uh, this kind of low ct value they ask you if you had covid before and if you say yes they retest you more couple of times and you're good to go mm. even in hong kong so yes this is mm. not not um like this approach makes little sense because people, yeah, some people can take months to to, to recover in full. So they're right. taking all those right. numbers. So yeah, so that's the tricky part. Yeah. So, but if everything is good on day six and day seven, then you are discharged from hotel, and you can go to your destination. So normally, if you are lucky enough to fly in into the city where you where your destination is, then you will be taken by a special car to your home in, in general. And uh, in, in, in there you need to stay like three days in um, locked in your apartment for another three days. And they will be taking, I think, two tests during these three days. And mm. if all good, you're, you're good to go. Uh, however, uh, it may vary because um, China depends largely on local management. So if you're a local management uh, decides that they feel more safe if you stay seven days instead of three. There is not, not much you can do. And in general, there is not much you can do in China right now. So their work is final. Like there is no way, there is no room for some argument or even if your embassy calls or whatever, like not much, not much that can be done. In my case, I will need to fly to Shenzhen. So I'm now in Shenyang, which is north of China, because mm -hmm. from Poland, there was only these direct flights available. And since if you're taking connection flights, you need to obtain a PCR testing and the green codes in the embassy and each uh, stopover so that's very troublesome so you yeah. need to pick direct direct flights so i picked to shenyang and at the time i bought my tickets uh, hong kong hasn't cancelled quarantine yet mm. so I, I went i went for direct flight so i'm uh, in shenyang which is north of china and um, i will be flying to shenzhen which is south of china and so how it works uh, you are taken from hotel you are taken by a special car to the airport and the airport you cannot go into the main airport area so there is like a side door and a side room for people who are like me who still have like three days to stay at home for quarantine 
you've been also given a person who will walk you through and she, like this person will not leave you until she puts you on, she or he uh, puts you on the plane so mm. she, this person is going through all the customs formalities check everything with you you are not allowed to go anywhere even to toilet uh, you are waiting for your flight then you are the first one to be put on the flight before other passengers are coming in so you're put on your flight first and then all the passengers come in then you fly to Shenzhen in Shenzhen is kind of same so you're waiting until all passengers leave in the aircraft then only you're allowed to go again special person comes to to walk you out uh, you are you, they are not letting you go into the airport so you are basically taking you out of the airport uh, on the airplane they give you your luggage straight away at the airplane like you do. Uh, and then you are taken by to a special place they take test again and then they take you to some stop bus stop or like car stop and then you are waiting there will be a special car again in a driver who wears all this uh, isolation clothes and everything and this driver will, will drive you to your place uh, mm-hmm. where you will stay three more days uh, the tricky part and this is something i might be facing as well seems so uh, depending like right now my management uh, house management is not very cooperative uh, especially once they learn that i had a positive history so basically it depends on your house management if they allow you to stay the three days at home if they don't allow you you need to find some special also like quarantine hotel that will take you for these three days until you are cleared Mm. so that depends so in case you didn't have covid history like i did mostly it's okay and your your destination place will accept you for these three days but if you are are (laughs) unlike the same as i am then uh, yeah then it's tricky like i don't know yet where i will end up for these three days Um, this is this is specific to you because you're a resident there but if i guess somebody visiting for business they're not necessarily going to have that issue no (laughs) that no. <laughs> doesn't work like that no uh, any any hotel cannot be a quarantine hotel it's only like special designated hotels oh, so, so if your hotel, if your final destination hotel doesn't accept you you would then have to go to another type of hotel yes so like your really? final dist- like if you're staying in i don't know whatever shangri-la whatever hotels those hotels will not accept you right okay. there is no there is no way so it's a special management hotel like it, it cannot be like this this hotel only accepts people uh, who are under quarantine right the same hotel cannot accept people who are just visitors and, and you're completing your quarantine and right. this is a bit loose management because they're not really helping much here as well and if like okay for me i'm a resident i speak some chinese i have uh, wechat contacts of my house management uh, wherever so i can at least try to solve the situation if you are just completely new coming to china you've been here seven days and then you need to complete your three days quarantine but they're not helping so basically you are left on your own to solve yeah. your problems yeah. where and how you will find this hotel with no one speaking english mm. uh, there are some hotels that allow you to stay 10 days in a row uh, so sometimes it's possible that you're you can stay 10 days instead of seven plus three until you're completely cleared and then on day 10 you're like normal nothing else you can come yourself and do whatever you want mm. uh, so there, it is an option but you don't know like you cannot choose some some hotels have that so for example the first hotel i've been taken to before hospital that one had this option so you could stay seven days plus three at home or you could right. stay 10 days and then after, on day 10 you are free and you can travel yourself wherever right. you need so there's no more right. there is no more supervision so of course if you're just visiting china this is a preferred option yeah yeah, because it's where it's very stressful to uh and not very predictable i would say to to plan this extra three days there is lack of uh, management in on this side yeah so yeah i i like for even for myself i don't know yet how that will look like in my situation and of course also even this traveling with a special person in a special airport sector you know like uh, like kind of prison uh, accompany oh. it's, uh, it's it's very stressful of course mm. and uh, so i would suggest to stay 10 days if you can mm-hmm. but it depends like for example hotel i'm in here they don't allow like you cannot stay 10 days you, you need to stay seven three seven days and then yeah uh, another three days uh, wherever your destination is mm, okay so, so yes. you, you, you mentioned wechat as well you know like ordering food and things like that for some people that were visiting they may not be able to do that 
using using WeChat, they might not have WeChat, they might not have the bank connected to WeChat. So I mean, actually, this process could be very, very difficult for somebody that doesn't have WeChat, doesn't speak Chinese, right? Definitely. So first, uh, you cannot order. <laughs> in, there's the only place you could order food was in hospital, but wow. uh, it's not that you can choose. It's just that because hospital doesn't include food service. So the only thing you can choose is to for a person to bring you food or no food. That's mm. it. But you cannot choose what food you want. Uh, and I don't know if you are vegan, if you have special diet, <laughs> if you have diabetics. Good luck with that. Yeah, how that works, I don't even know, like, really. And uh, and the food uh, is very, 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 very special, I would say. So even for me, I'm, I live in China for, like, over eight years. I'm very mm. accustomed to Chinese food. Mm-hmm. That was still a challenge. I For now, I still don't know how many kg I've lost already during this wow. time. But I think it's a lot, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's hard. And uh, especially if you don't have WeChat, I don't know how you will communicate because people don't talk. Even I speak Chinese, they don't talk. Yeah. Uh, the, the only way they're doing like a WeChat group with doctors. And this is your only way you can at least ask some questions and try to get some answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, no one uses WhatsApp in China or no. I mean, nothing else. Like if you don't have WeChat, I have no idea how, how you will manage them. Yeah, mm. so that's... Yeah. So, look, I mean... <laughs> Your case is not necessarily <laughs> typical. I, I know people that have gone to China and they've gone in, they've done the yeah. quarantine and then they've just been released and then it, they've been able to get on as normal. Admittedly, yes. I don't know many foreigners that have done that. I know Chinese nationals that have done <laughs> it. Uh, and I don't know whether foreigners are maybe treated more carefully, let's put it that way. But I think your story, hopefully it's not typical Maybe the hotel, the hospital that you ended up in also is not typical. Uh, I'd like to think that it's uh, it can be better, but it's definitely a story that serves to warn people that are planning on traveling to China soon of of the sort of process that awaits them. It's not as simple as you might think. Yeah, so if things go wrong, basically, there is little control and there is little you can do. So I, my my main advice would be that if you had COVID history, in like within one, two months, wait, don't mm. go. Mm. So you need to wait maybe at least three months before you go to China just to be safe. Uh, because, yeah, that's, uh, that's the biggest uh, issue that may happen to you. And there is not much you can do in this situation. Like what I've learned is that the epidemic uh, police in China now has like kind of superior power over everything. Like basically nothing, nothing you can do. Mm. So you will just need to rely on people who don't even talk to you. You don't have full information. Uh, it's super stressful. I've met a guy on a CT scanning in the hospital who was from uh, Austria and uh, he, he was in the same hospital with me, same situation. And um, he, it was his first time to come to China and he spoke zero Chinese and, wow. and he was shocked. Like he was just like standing with those around. He, he could not even talk to me. He was like already somewhere like below the level. So I was trying at least to explain him like at least things I knew to comfort him. Mm. And yeah, but for him, he was just like, I don't know. I don't know what the, how long I'm staying here. I don't know even what's my health situation when i will be released where i will be released do i need to go to the hotel or i can go straight like he knew nothing so that's like super stressful yeah um yeah and uh, definitely for conditions i really hope yeah that uh, there are different hospitals Mm. with different approach and different conditions because uh, this one it, it yeah, like it's it's not hospital standard mm. at all. Mm. It's more like a prison, especially considerably that you don't receive, like in my case, for example, you don't receive any treatment. Uh, I just felt like very, um, I don't know, not, not healthy and very down in, in mm. there because like there is no light. It is just like you're, you're feeling like you're being punished for something, <laughs> for mm. something you didn't do, like mm. you didn't yeah you don't treat patients in in this way so yeah so i think my biggest warning would be that if you had covid history wait yeah don't 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 do my mistake so that was my mistake that i thought that if i'm negative that's good enough to go 
Right. Well, you would think that's uh, sensible, to be yeah. honest, as logical. Uh, yeah, logical. I, I mean, look, I'd love to visit China sometime soon as well. But yeah, it definitely makes me take pause. And uh, I guess all that I can say is we're all rooting for you. Hopefully you get out of that quarantine you. hotel soon yes. and you can get home. I mean, because also you've got a family. This isn't just you on your own, right? So, I mean, you know, we, we need to get you home ASAP. But thanks very much for sharing your story with us. Uh, I think that's a really interesting insight into what happens when you are trying to travel to China these days. So thanks, Kate. Hopefully we'll get you back on the podcast again soon to talk more professionally. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Kate. Thanks again for listening to this podcast brought to you by the Sophies Group. We're on a mission to provide you with everything you need to manufacture effectively in Asia, including inspections, auditing, new product development support, contract manufacturing, 3PL warehousing and fulfillment, and much, much more across Asia's key manufacturing areas. Visit us at sophiest.com, that's S-O-F-E-A-S-T dot com, to learn more and get help. If you've enjoyed the podcast today, please do rate, review and share because it will really help others discover us too.